It's been two years since I started uploading videos to this YouTube channel. Meanwhile, I got monetized and I earned thousands of dollars by uploading programming tutorials. Watch until the end, where I reveal my YouTube income. Well, not really, but in the first two years of this channel, I earned almost 4000 subscribers and my 21 videos gained almost 140,000 views. In this video, I want to share my learnings with you. Usually, you don't see my face in programming tutorials. I want to focus on what's important and I don't think that my face adds any value to a programming tutorial. But this time, everything is different. After uploading to YouTube for two years, I want to make a more behind the scenes video where I look back and show you how I started and grow my channel up to now. By the way, I don't always wear a cap, but in 2020 everything is different and I haven't been to a hairdresser for too long. Maybe you're a subscriber and want to learn more about the person behind this channel. Maybe you think about starting your own developer YouTube channel? Or maybe you already have a channel and want to grow it further. When I started my channel back in December 2018, I quickly learned that starting a YouTube channel is a lot more work than I thought. In this video, we're going to unpack how I started my channel, why I create the videos the way I do, what's coming in the future and how much I really earn with this channel. I'm not going too technical into how exactly I create the videos, but I'm going to talk about the strategy and the process I use to create my videos. Feel free to ask questions in the comments if you want to know about anything we discuss. Some of the topics discussed in this video come from answers to a tweet I got from the community. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and participate in future discussions. And thanks to everyone who answered with a meaningful question. I originally wanted to create video courses besides my developer job. Although making money on the side was a small factor in my decision, I really wanted to learn about new technologies and share my learnings with the community. I've been blogging for more than 10 years and I always wanted to get into video creation as well. In summer 2018, I proposed topics to two major course platforms. Unfortunately, I got rejected by both. I don't know the exact reason, but they didn't give me a chance to prove myself. It was the moment I realized I wanted to create a tutorial for myself and not to make money. That's when I decided to create a YouTube channel. YouTube accepts everyone as a content creator, so it became my job to create tutorials and videos that people are willing to watch. Let's go through a few key metrics of my channel. At the time of this recording, I have 21 videos on my channel. Those 21 videos gained more than 140,000 views since I started the channel. 6 out of 21 videos on my channel have more than 10,000 views, 7 videos have at least 1,000 views and 8 videos have less than 1,000 views so far. Let's talk about how to grow a channel and earn views as a brand new channel. I created and uploaded my first video in December 2018. It took me more than 5 days from the first line of the script until the video was recorded and uploaded. By now, this video gained more than 36,000 views. When you start a YouTube channel, YouTube doesn't know you, YouTube doesn't know your videos and it doesn't know what people would be interested in watching your videos. That's why I recommend creating videos that can rank in YouTube search when creating a new channel. My first video is titled Introduction to Dependency Injection in c -sharp. When I did some research before creating my first video, I found out that most videos that show up weren't either not that helpful or very outdated. It turned out I could rank my video in YouTube search and I steadily get new people watching my video. When we take a look at the analytics, we see that people consistently watch this video. Let's compare that to the graph of a video that wasn't able to rank and didn't consistently gain views. We see that after growing at the beginning, the line continues almost horizontally. In conclusion, my advice for people starting a new channel would be to search for keywords that you can rank your videos for in YouTube search. It's the most reliable source of viewers if you're starting from zero.
I don't want to go too technical about how I create my videos, but at the same time, I want you to understand why creating a video the way I do takes a lot of time. It takes me about 6 to 16 hours to create an 8 to 10 minute video for my channel. In the beginning, it took me even longer. Let's talk about the different steps involved in creating a video and how much time is spent along the way. In the beginning, I decide on the title of a video. The title is an important factor to rank in YouTube search. Also, the title defines the topic and scope of the video. It usually takes between 10 to 15 minutes to figure out a good title. Depending on the topic, I either put in the time to research the language feature or program a sample project. This step can be as short as 1 to 2 hours or as long as an entire day. I write down a few subheadings that define the content and the scope of the video. It's usually a list of 3 to 5 points. This step usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Next, I write a full script for everything I'll say in the video. It helps me to provide as much value as possible. I avoid filling words and I make sure that there is a logical flow from the video start to the end. It takes about 2 to 4 hours to create a script depending on the topic and the length of the video. I record the voiceover part of the video separately. It means that I take the script and record myself talking through the script before recording the screen. It usually takes 2 to 3 times as long as the length of the final recording. After recording the voiceover, I use filters and tools to adjust the voice quality and overall sound to make it enjoyable to listen. In the beginning, it took me a long time to edit the audio. Meanwhile, it takes about 20 minutes to go through an entire voiceover. While listening to my own voice, I record the screen. It usually takes a few takes because I make too many typos or something doesn't work as planned. It usually takes me twice as long as the final recording. After recording the screen and recording the audio, I create static images I use within the video. After that, I import everything into my editing software and start putting all the pieces together. It usually takes about 2 to 4 hours of editing depending on how many zooms and section highlights I put in the video. After editing the video, I hit the export button and the software renders the video. I don't have the most expensive or most recent hardware, but DaVinci Resolve usually renders a video in a few minutes. When the rendering is done, I rewatch the video to make sure there are no mistakes in the video and I upload it to YouTube. I don't have the best internet connection, so it takes a few minutes. After uploading, YouTube processes the video, which also takes a few minutes before it's ready. I upload all my videos as private and schedule them to go online at a defined day and time. While the video is processing, I write a video description. It means that I grab a few parts of the script I wrote before and the default template with all the links to my socials and playlists and put them together. It takes about 15 minutes. Last but not least, I create a thumbnail for the video. It's the little image that should make people click on the video. I have a template but I try to adjust it to the topic of the video. It takes between 10 minutes and an hour to create a thumbnail. As you can see, this process is very time consuming, but at the same time, each step helps me provide the best quality possible. Every single second of a video is designed to provide value to the viewer. My style is to provide the viewer with as much information as possible in a short period. For the future, I also plan to create code along videos that have a much simpler process. But right now, this process describes exactly what I do for every single video I upload on this channel. If you want to learn more about exactly how I create my videos, leave a comment below and I might create a more technical video explaining step by step how I create my coding tutorials. What's the most challenging part of having a YouTube channel? For me, it's consistency. I have a day job and sometimes life just happens. It's hard to make time to create another video for the channel. What helped me the most is not pressuring me on how many times I want to upload a new video. Sure, I want to do as many as I can. Every YouTube expert will tell you that you have to upload at least a video every single week to be successful. While I don't necessarily disagree with this advice, if you cannot upload every single week, it isn't the end of the world. 
In the beginning, I tried to keep up with weekly uploads, but I soon found out that I wasn't able to hold on to the schedule and I was frustrated. To fix this, I committed to uploading every other week instead of doing a weekly video. It wasn't the best solution, but it worked. I have a lot less pressure and people still watch my new videos. It just takes a little more time. Managing a YouTube channel is a marathon and not a sprint. If you think you can create a channel and upload a video here and there and become the next Mr. Beast in a week or a month, let me tell you, it doesn't work like that. I plan on creating a full home office tour since the beginning of the year. I think in 2021 it might finally happen. Nonetheless, I can share the resources and tools and gear I use to create my videos. I use OBS for screen recording. I have multiple scenes, but most of the time I use a simple scene setup to record one of my screens at full resolution. As a microphone, I have a Rode Podcaster USB microphone on a Rode PSA1 mount. I have a Logitech C920 webcam and this video is recorded with my Canon M50 with its kit lens. The kit lens needs a lot of light for indoor recording. That's why I have two Elgato key lights to light the room and my face. For audio recording I use Audacity. It's free software that offers countless options to record and post-process audio. I do all my audio recording, editing and post-processing in Audacity and export an mp3 file in the end. As a non-native English speaker and writer I use Grammarly to help me with grammar and spelling mistakes. I also use their web editor to write all my video scripts and blog posts. For video editing, I use DaVinci Resolve. Resolve has a free version that allows you to professionally cut, edit and render videos. It isn't the simplest solution, there are simpler tools, but I wanted something powerful to learn along the way. They also offer a paid version, which offers advanced features. For my graphics and thumbnails, I'm currently migrating from an old Adobe Photoshop CS6 license to the Affinity Suite. Affinity Designer has most of the features for a one-time payment of $50 compared to the Adobe Suite that costs $60 per month. You'll find a link to all my gear and software I use in the video description. Let's be honest, most people either think that YouTubers make a lot of money or no money at all. Let me tell you, it's wrong. There is a middle ground. My channel hit the monetization requirements of 4000 hours of watch time and 1000 subscribers in July 2020. Since July, my channel made about $150. I currently have a little more than 10,000 views on my channel per month, resulting in around $30 to $35 per month of ad revenue. So am I able to live off of this money? No, but it helps out. Every dollar I make from the videos I put back into gear, software and tools to either make more or better content or improve my process. Also, YouTube income is scalable. If I create more videos and more people watch my content, I could earn double the money next month. My salary, on the other hand, is fixed and does not scale like this. I'm not planning to go full time with YouTube anytime soon, but we'll see how my channel continues to grow. It's time to set a few goals for the third year of my channel. I don't want to pressure myself too much because I think I'll be disappointed if I don't hit those goals. After all, creating those videos is and should remain fun for me. Nonetheless, with more than 3700 subscribers by the end of 2020, I'll hope to make it to 5000 subscribers in the first half of 2021 and 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm currently sitting at 390 views per day in the last 28 days. I want to put out a video every other week and sometimes also back to back to increase the daily views to at least 1000 views by the end of 2021. I'm currently working on a crash course. It will be a series of YouTube videos that will take you from beginner to a professional. I'm not going to spoil the exact topic right now. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. It's going to be a full course that you usually have to pay on other platforms. 
I hope you learned a lot about running a YouTube channel and about my journey so far. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you'd like to see more often. I'm thinking about making an update in a year to see how far the channel has made it. If you want to support my journey, there's a Patreon link in the video description. But most importantly, share this channel with your developer friends and let them know about my free tutorials. It's the best way to show YouTube that my videos are helpful. And if enough people watch my videos, YouTube will recommend them to a bigger audience. Leave your questions in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer as many as I can. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next.